Hey everyone, this is Michael from Up and Running Tutorials, and in this video we'll talk about a few different ways to add content to a Gatsby project, and the advantages and disadvantages of each approach. So, we've created a new Gatsby project using the default starter, and we've opened it in VS Code and started Gatsby's development server so we can see our project in the browser. If you're not sure how to get to this point, check out the link in the description below to an earlier video that walks you through how to start a new Gatsby project. Assuming you've done that, let's talk about adding content to Gatsby. So far in this series, we've introduced how to write HTML in a Gatsby project by using JSX, and how to style that HTML using various approaches to writing CSS in React. To make those skills more useful though, we're gonna need to add some content so we actually have something to mark up and style. So what is content? Well, content is basically everything that's not your code. It's the text and images and other media that you want to show to your users. So one option for how to add content to a Gatsby project is to add it directly to your components. This is known as hard coding your content. A good example of this in the starter is the text on the homepage. As you can see in the browser, the homepage has some text, says, hi people, welcome to your new Gatsby site, now go build something great. That text has been hard coded into the index.js file in the pages folder. We see that text right here, and if we change it here in the code, if we say go build something awesome and save that, you can see that updates the site in the browser, so that confirms that this text is coming from right here. If you're new to React and to Gatsby and you're used to writing HTML directly, this is probably exactly what you're used to. It's a very simple way to add your content, and this approach will still work in Gatsby. However, there are a few disadvantages to hard coding your content like this and placing it alongside your code. And you may just want to be aware of what these disadvantages are. The trouble comes later on when you want to update this content. Whoever's updating this content has to update it directly in your code. This can present a challenge to anyone who isn't a coder. And even for yourself, if you're updating this project and you haven't seen it for the last six months or for a year or more, you may have learned a lot since then and changed how you're writing your code and find this code base a bit strange looking at that point. So it can be a bit time consuming to find this content inside your code base and update it. And there's also a risk that whoever is updating this content might accidentally break your code in the process. So hard coding your text is simple and fast while you're creating your project, but it can make your future updates a bit time consuming and more risky than you may want since the person updating your content is going to need to open up your code and interact with it. For other assets like images, other media, PDFs, that type of thing, the equivalent of hard coding is to import that asset directly into your component and hard code the path to that assets file. The default starter includes this image on the home page, and the file for that image lives in the images folder here, and the image is this PNG right here, Gatsby-Astronaut. So I'm just going to comment out the image component that the starter is using, and now let's say that we want to add this PNG to our home page. If you're used to writing HTML directly, you would probably start by creating an image element, and then in the source attribute, you would write the path to the image. So in this case, it would be up a level and then into the images folder, and then we would choose the Gatsby astronaut.png. And then we'd add some descriptive text, something like an astro not serving Gatsby on a tray or something like that. Then we'd close the element and give that a save and let's see what happens. So we can see in the browser that instead of seeing the image, we're getting an indication that the path to the image is broken and we're seeing the alt text instead. So the problem here is that in this case, Gatsby is using Webpack to bundle up our source code and place the bundled versions in the public folder. And it's the public folder that is actually shown in the browser. So this means the path that we've written to our image is no longer valid by the time the site is in the browser. The way to fix this when using Webpack is to save the image to a variable and then pass that variable to the source attribute instead. That way Webpack can update the path when it bundles your code. 
So to save this path to a variable, we would just come up here and say import, and then we just need to name the variable we want to store our image in. So we could just say astronaut image. You could call this anything you want. And then we say from, and as the path, we can just take this path that we wrote down here and copy it up here and now replace it with the variable that we've created above. If we give that a save, we can see that the image now appears and the path is now correct. And to see what that path has become, we can inspect this image and we can see here that Webpack has updated the path to now point to the static folder and then to a copy of this image that has been renamed with a unique hash. And if we look here in the public folder, we can see that it includes this static folder where Gatsby has copied our assets. So that shows us how we can hard code not only text, but also assets like images into our components. You can use this exact same approach to import audio files and video files, any kind of asset files that you want to hard code. You can just import them this way and store them in a variable and then add that variable to your markup. However, the same disadvantages that applied to hard coding text apply to hard coding our asset paths as well. If in the future this image needs to be updated, whoever is making the update is going to need to come right into the code base find this file and manually update this hard-coded image path to point to the new image. That can work fine if you are making all the updates to your code, but as before, it can be confusing if anyone else needs to update this content and it introduces the risk that since they're opening up your code, they might accidentally make a mistake and change something about your logic or your markup or your styling while they're editing the content. So it's quick and easy to write your content this way, but it makes it more time consuming to update and a little more risky as well, since the content is blended right in with the rest of your code. With images specifically, there's another disadvantage here, which is that this image that we've just added hasn't been processed or optimized in any way. We're just showing the full size unoptimized version of this image because we've just directly imported it and then displayed it and haven't given Gatsby the chance to do any optimizations for us in between. In a future video, we'll explore in detail how Gatsby can automatically optimize your images for you. For now, just know that none of those optimizations are available if you just import the images directly like this. So we've covered what hard coding is and how you do that. And we've also talked about some of its disadvantages. So what's the alternative? With Gatsby, the alternative to hard coding your content is to store it outside of your code anywhere you like. And when you need it, to pull it into your components using a query language called GraphQL. Since your content is stored outside of your code, that means you can update your content or move it somewhere else without ever touching your components or interacting with your code. This makes updates much faster and less confusing. And it also makes it possible for someone who's not a coder to update the content of your project for you. In the next video, we'll learn how to use GraphQL and practice using it to import data into our components. Until then, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.